Hey guys, it's Victoria coming to you from New York and lighting may be a little off right here, but here goes. I want to talk to you about anger management and I'm no expert by any means, but I have learned a few things along the way and I want to share them with you. I am 45 years old and it took me about 45 years to learn all of this. I was relatively a very easygoing kid, uh, you can ask my mom, and I'm one of five children, so that's not an easy task. But some of the siblings have more volatile type of properties or, you know, qualities, as you will. And I learned a few things from them and picked them up along the way. And also when you get like hormones start raging and you start to become a teenager, those things come into play and you can't really decide what you're going to do with your emotions. So sometimes it can come out in the form that you've learned them. And in my case, I've heard some yelling over the years, not a crazy family, but just yelling and uh, bickering. It's just like a Middle Eastern type of mentality that's just louder. I don't know, my, Michael's family's not loud, my family is. It's weird. He's not really used to it even after 17 years. He still is like, oh my God, you guys yell so much. But we're really just talking or discussing things at a dinner table. Anyway, recently, um, family member had gotten angry. Uh, it was kind of weird because I think she was just angry with something else right beforehand and just wanted to fight with me and took what I said the wrong way. I said, don't get involved, please. And she said, don't yell at me. And I wasn't yelling. So eerily enough, I was very calm where I would have, before I would have, you know, retaliated and said, well, I'm not yelling at you like that, but I said, I don't remember yelling. And I had one of my brothers as a witness, so I just calmed down in the back of my head. I said, calm down, you don't have to stay here and listen to this, or you could just even know that you're going back to another state and you don't have to even see this person anymore. And it just, it, it started to unravel in my head and I started to watch the entire thing unfold as she was fighting with somebody else in my family, I felt very calm and I felt like the way to stop myself from yelling I took a big glass of water that was in front of me and I drank it because you can't yell while you're drinking water and so I felt inclined to be more in the present moment and watch this whole thing unravel and not look like the idiot that I used to look like when I used to fight back because it wasn't going to get me anywhere at all and this person was always going to be angry so where was I getting? Where was I going with it? So in the end, she looked like the idiot and I looked great because people were actually applauding me afterwards. Like, oh, I can't believe you let that happen and you didn't fight back. Now, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And I don't know if you're familiar with Brooklyn, New York, but I have this type of way of retaliating and I can do it and I'm not a pushover, but you know, it's not a push up. You're stronger if you hold back. You're stronger if you don't get into that argument, that fight. And I felt very calm afterwards. I felt very much joy out of not retaliating like that. There are other ways to retaliate to get your message um, through. And I didn't feel the need to have to even explain or control the situation. I just, I was in control of myself and that's all I can do. That's all I can say for myself. I could only control myself and I wish I had known this earlier, even 10 days ago would have been great. Um, I just feel so much more relieved that A, I didn't have to get angry and take so much stuff out of myself. Oh my God, it takes so much to be angry. It's so draining on your well-being. It's so unhealthy and I'm taking care of my health but then I'll get angry. It doesn't make sense. They don't they don't mesh together. So I want to be more, of course, I'm not going to, I want to be more calm, but of course it's not going to always happen, but I can definitely revel in the fact that I did it. I did it. I can't believe I can do it. And I, I really give myself a pat on the back for that one. And I want to share it with you. If you have anything to say, if you want to sleep on it or just come back to that person in an hour and see what happens in an hour. I also learned that in relationship therapy. See what happens in an hour. 
don't make it more than an hour, but see what happens in an hour and see how you feel after that. Maybe you can calm down. Maybe it'll fester and get you more angry. I don't know. That's what usually happens to me. If I'm told to not talk about it, of course you could talk about it with somebody else. That's what makes it more calm later on. Like if you could talk about it with somebody else, don't let it fester. If it really gets inside your head and you have to let it out, call a friend, uh, write it down in an email, write it down by hand, get your anger out, and then come back to the person an hour later. And not a minute more, a minute more than, a le than an hour. I think an hour is very, it's sufficient. It's a good, good rule to get um, clarity. Clarity. You can definitely get more clarity by waiting an hour. And I was always just like, yeah, and right now, come on, let's fight. And also, when I was a meat eater, I know this is a crazy connection, but I was more angry as a meat eater. Look at meat eaters and tell me they're not more ferocious and angry. They are. And the plant eater animals are just like more calm, you know, they placid. I'd rather hang out with a meat, I mean, a plant eating animal any day over a meat eating one. That's just me. They're just more ferocious. They could attack there. There's more fear involved because you're eating the fear of the animal and I think that the animals are very instinctual and they know that they're gonna be killed. So all that stuff gets into their bloodstream and whammo. So these are just thoughts that I have. And also what comes into play are other dietary things like gluten, I'm noticing a difference in hormones like right before your period, pregnancy, right during that whole entire process. Uh, you could be emotionally crazy. And you could also cry about things that don't necessarily have any attachment, which happens to me during yoga, during a detox or whatever. And or right before my period, I'm just like, I'll cry at like an AT&T commercial. I'm not kidding. I would just like bawl like a baby. So cheesy, so crazy. Like a day after my period, I'm like, what kind of stupid commercial is this? So go figure. So that's my little thing for today. Drink an entire bottle of water while somebody's yelling at you and you can't yell back. Impossible. And laugh in your head. And know that it's gonna be over just like when a wave crashes over you. You go under the wave and it eventually goes over you. And that was fun. It's actually fun to watch somebody yell. It's almost like a movie. It's like watching somebody being yelled at in school and you're not that person, right? You get me on that one? All right, well, it's a gorgeous day and I'm gonna get out there. It's actually, it's like really, really hot out actually. If you wanna know the truth, it's like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. But still, I'm not gonna stay indoors, so I'll see you later or you'll see me in the next video because that's how this works. All right, take care, bye.